Okay, Tov, today's stop is the Nun Ches in Baba Basras. We learned for Achim of Kobayi Sitchel and Asun Basar of Shibya. Yesterday we began talking about Rabbi Noah and his greatness. He was a great Talmud Chacham, and people came to him for advice. And because he was so great, he was considered worthy of checking out the uh, the crypts, the caves of where Sadiqim were buried, and he marked them so that Kohanim would not be tumbling. We said the Rashbam and Tosas both talked about the fact that uh, he marked them to uh, delineate where they were. So Kohanim, you know, put up a sign there, Kohanim, you know, it's not like today where uh, you go to Hebron and you see this big building, Ma'arat HaMachbeila, the Ma'ara is below, but the building that, you, that the Arabs, whoever built that is, is on top, wasn't there at the time. It was just a cave, a crypt below. So he had to mark that so you know where it is. Today, you know exactly where it is. Tosa says, we said before we were showing a mask, what do you mean? They were they were Tameh, they were Tzadikim, and that not only that, they were buried, they were from before Mat and Torah, where they were really Tameh. So, uh, so Tosa says that uh, Abram is called Adam, even though it's Adam Kimas Ba'ol and Goyim are not Metameh Ba'ol, apparently. And the Rabbanan say, in other words, Abshimon says that what that Goyim are not Metameh Ba'ol. The Rabbanan say it is, and we're Machmir today, besides the fact that we don't know. There might be Jewish graves there too, but even if you know for sure that it was a goy, uh, we're still makbid not to be ma'ahil on goyish graves. So a coin would not be able to attend a non-Jewish funeral. Uh, even so, but uh, Avram Avinu and uh, others, Adam, were called Adam. Uh, Adam Rish was certainly called Adam. And therefore, even though they weren't necessarily, they were they were for Matan Torah, they were still considered Adam. And we said that it also says it because they were Nevi'im, so they were like Jews. Another shot that uh, that they bring down is that um, uh, the, he might have marked the, cra- the the caves not so that a kohenim would avoid them, but rather that people who went to Mishat who saw that by uh, Kolei when he went to when he went to he was one of the ten, one of the twelve spies, the good ones. Uh, he stopped at the Hebron to pray at the forum of his forefathers. So he did that. So in other words, not he didn't they didn't mark it. He didn't necessarily mark it. So that Kohen would avoid it, like Rosh Raman tells to say, but other Shams say he did it in order to mark where it was so that people who wanted to go pray there would know exactly where it was. That they could, he was Mashtata, he he um he prostrated himself on the kever, so to speak, praying that in their schus, uh, you're not supposed to pray to the dead, but in their schus, uh, that he should be saved. Okay. Only, only Jews are caught up. Only Jews are caught up. Right. That's what he says, what Tosa says. That Adam Kiyomas Ba'ol and Goyim are not called Adam. Right? That's what Tosa says. Uh, Tosa says that in the third line. They're not called Adam. So, how were how were the uh, Avos who weren't Jewish yet? How were they called Adam? So he said still that Avram Bin was called Adam. So Adam Agadol, he was called an Adam, and Adam Rishon, certainly that was his name, Adam. But besides that, we say also the false brings down because they were in Nevi'im. Uh, and that's why uh, that's why Conan would would have to avoid it. If you learn that that's the reason why he marked them, maybe he marked them for both reasons, so that Conan would avoid it, and so that non Conan would go to pray there. Both things could be true. Okay, so now we're in the Gemara. Um, Amra Bino, about uh, let's see, six lines into the wide lines. Amra Bino, this is where we left off yesterday. The Sakati Bishnei when Rabbino visited the crypt of Abram of Avinu in Naras Machpelah. When he went there, he said, I saw his two heels, his two feet, the, the he, heels of his feet. They look like the two orbs of the sun. In other words, they have this tremendous radiance, and they look like the two orb, two orbs of the sun. Um, and then he goes on to say, how cold, the Gemara goes on to say, we talk about splendor and, and, and uh, you know, radiance of, of things. That, I, that the compare, all people compared to Sara in their beauty, uh, or radiance, whatever, were like were like monkeys compared to a person. In other words, compared to Sara, everybody else looked like a monkey in terms of their beauty. Uh, and Sara compared to Chava, the first woman, also was like a monkey compared to a person. In other words, Chava was so much more beautiful. Even Chava compared to her husband, Adam, was also like a monkey compared to a person. Adam, of any human being compared to the radiance, the beauty of the Shekhinah of Hashem, is also Kikop Adam. Goes on, these the Gemars we've had elsewhere also. This is all mentioned Agaburcha because he went into the cave and he talked about the radiance, but we're still going to come back to Rabbanah. We're not done with Rabbanah. Shufri de Rav Kana, the beauty of Rav Kana, main Shufri de Rav, was 
was a reflection of the beauty of Rab. In other words, Rab was much more beautiful, was much more handsome. Shufri de Rab, and Shufri Rabavu. He was also just a uh, like a subset, a, a reflection of Rabavu. Shufri, excuse me, Shufri de Rabavu, main Shufri Yaakov Avinu was, was part, was again, reflection of the beauty of Yaakov Avinu, who was so much greater. Shufri Yaakov Avinu, main Shufri Adam Rishon. His beauty was was that was only compared was ref, was a reflection of the beauty of Adam Rishon was so much greater. And Rashbam points out you don't mention Rabbi Yochanan even though Rabbi Yochanan was known to be very uh, a beautiful man and he you know he would stand by the mikvahs remember and, and when the women come out so they should look on him and have beautiful children like him doesn't mention here Rabbi Yochanan because Rabbi Yochanan did not have a beard and he didn't have a, what we call a hadras panim and therefore he's not mentioned over here shows you that a beard is part of the hadras panim of a person. Elam Gusha, there was a magician. There was a, he was a, what we call today, a grave robber. <laughs> he used to dig up the graves to try to strip them of the clothes. This is what this magician did. In other words, why did he have to be a magician? Apparently because only a magician knew where to look for the, for the farm. They weren't marked in those days. When he came to the cave, the crypt of Rav Tubi Barmasa, that, that rabbi, that, uh, that rabbi, Tufsei lay vidigne. Tufsei, he grabbed him. Tough say he grabbed him, uh, like he, he grabbed the whole thing. Also, by a by came Amrle, my says, Matusma, he asked for Tubi Barbasna. In other words, Tubi Masna objected to this magician grabbing his clothes and he, he held on to him and he wouldn't let go. A by came, Amrle, Matusma, I beg of you, Shafke, uh, leave him alone, let, let the magician go. Okay, let him go. The Shanach, the next year, Hadras, he came again, same thing, he came back again, Tough say, Bidikne, and he grabbed him. <laughs> by his beard. <laughs> in the first year, so he didn't have uh, the dignity. Here he says, um, that, here he says he grabbed him by his beard now. In other words, he grabbed the magician by his beard. Also, Abai came, Lo Shafke, he didn't let him go. In other words, Abai came again to to, to uh, plead on behalf of, of uh, the magician, but Rav Tubi Bamasna, the dead Rav Tubi Bamasna, would not let him go. Ada Aisi, Misbara, until Abai had to come and bring a scissors because of the dignity. He cut his beard off. That was the only way he freed him was by cutting the guy's beard off because the dead person held on to his beard. Now we back to another story of Rabbanoah. A man was on his deathbed said, I'm giving, I'm giving three barrels to my three sons. I'm giving a barrel of dirt to one of my sons. A barrel of bones to one of my sons. And I'm giving a uh, barrel of... Um, of Udra. Udra is like fluff or, uh, you know, uh, material, um, tufts, whatever, to one of my sons. Lavia, they might come and come. They didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, apparently, he didn't want to, he didn't want to say, I'm giving all my property, all my animals, all my, he didn't want to list out his assets because people don't like, you know, others to know how much they had. And they, they, you might get all kinds of, uh, uh, all kinds of complaints and, uh, you know, uh, questioning the, um, uh, you know they 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 contest the will whatever so he didn't want they didn't want everybody to know how rich he was and that he had a lot of assets so he said I'm giving the dirt to one I'm giving the bones to another and I'm giving the tufts or the fluff to another they didn't know my kamalu also came to they came for Abnah who was a chacham and he understood Amalu do you have any land did your father leave any land Amalu okay yeah hey you said do you have any any uh, animals you have a farm with animals. Um, ain't the Amalu, they said yes, they do. Uh, he left over a lot of uh, land. Is uh, um, uh, so he says, Amalu, they said, yeah, is the do you have any uh, cushions or uh, you know, pillows, things like that? Quills, he says, ain't that's what he meant to tell you. He meant to tell you that the animals go to the one we said bones and the dirt goes when I said dirt, he meant the land. And when he said the uh, cushion, and when he said the uh, tufts or you know fluff, he meant you get you get the cushions. Maybe they were worth a lot. Who gavra? Now listen to this story. This is a basic story. Who gavra? A man heard his wife. He heard his wife. The Carmel of Arce told her daughter. The woman was a uh, let's call her a very promiscuous woman, and he heard his wife telling his daughter, Amilo Tznia Bisura, why are you not more modest when you commit adultery? In other words, when you when you're doing yisurim, you should be a little bit more modest. You shouldn't do it so flagrantly. Hachissa, me, I'm your mother. Asara bani Islam. 
I is well, this he's talking about herself in third person. You know, this woman has ten children, but less like only one of them is your father's. In other words, she committed a lot of adultery, and nine out of her ten sons are Mamzerim. When he died, now this man heard this, he wasn't too happy about hearing that. That probably hastened his death. When he died, he told everybody, I'm giving all my assets to one. He didn't know which is his kid. Right? He, he heard for his wife say that you know only one of the sons belongs to him. He didn't know which one. So he said, I'm giving all my assets to, to, to one son. To one son. And they didn't know. They didn't know. They, he didn't know who it was. And they didn't know. They didn't know who, who, which son it was. He said, listen. He said, listen, I'll tell you what you do. All you 10 boys come together here. Go beat the kever. Let's go bang on it. Smash it up. Until he gets up out of the kever. And he'll tell you who is the son is supposed to get it. He'll tell you who he left everything to. Now, he did this with Chachma. What does that mean? Rashbam says, 10 lines from the bottom of the page, Chavuta, uh, smite it, you know, uh, uh, strike it, Al-Kibro, and he wanted to test them. Why? He says, because the ones from Ramzerim, they are more impudent, but they'll go and do it. In other words, you, he, he encouraged them to show disrespect to their father. He wasn't going to get up out of the cave. He wasn't a rabbi like these guys, you know, like uh, who could talk after death like we had by Adam or Yaakov or this uh, Raptubi bar, uh, bar Masna, go bang on the cavern until he gets up and tells you. They wanted to show, he wanted to expose which of them are more impudent. Now, the truth is that a mamzer, it's no fault that he's a mamzer, right? He's born no fault. And he can be a great tamachachim. He can duchen. He can, uh, uh, well, he can't duchen because he can't be a coin, but he could be a tamachachim. You can give him kavod. He can. He can uh, be a minion, he, he can count on minion, he could do everything, right? He could be a great man, but he's still a mamzer. He says, but there was a feeling that the ones who were mamzer were more impudent, possibly because, uh, maybe because they didn't have proper upbringing or whatever it was, but he said the ones who were mamzer were more impudent, and they all went, azukulu, azuku, they all, all, nine out of the ten went and beat, and, you know, they struck the kever of their father, following his instructions, he was trying to form. The Bray have a law. So the one who was the real son did not go. Now the father didn't know necessarily who that who the son was. He said he didn't say if he knew it was, he would have he would have listed him. He would have told him, give it to Yanko. You know, he didn't say that. And the one who didn't, the one who didn't go and didn't show chutzpah, he was the son. And he Amalahu, so Rabbana said, Kulu Nachasai Dahai, Dahai. All the Nachasim belong to this guy, the one who didn't go. I told you all to go and strike the uh, the kever. The one who didn't go, it's his, his. He's the one who's the real son. Okay. Also, it's like a, it's like a, uh, you know, a Solomonic verdict. You know, like he did this with his chachma. Okay. Now, it's not 100%. Was it 100% proof? You know, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, when Shlomo Melech uh, did the test and she said, you know, give it to her. It's pretty, yeah, give it to her. Don't, don't cut the kid in half. Give it to her. He knew that was the mother. That was obvious. This isn't as obvious, right? So Oslu, so the other nine sons, who lost the Arusha, they went and they uh, ran it on him to the king, you know, to the government, you know, which is a common thing, unfortunately, that Jews do. They ran it on him to the king and they said, Amri, Ikigabra, there's a man here. In other words, this rabbi who awarded the whole Yerusha to this one son and not to us, uh, there's a man over here, Chadi, there's one man among the Jews, Kamapik Mimona, who extorts money, he extorts money from people without any witnesses. Uvalo here at the Girsa, Uvalo right without any proof. He extorted based on his, his, he did this test and he said, go beat the kefir of your father and the one who didn't go, he is the one who is the real son. Okay, so they they uh, they ran it on him <clears throat> to the uh, king. They turned him over to the king. Asu, the government uh, sent the officers, the police, whatever, Khafshu, and they put him in jail. They put him in jail. Also the visa. Now Rabbanah's wife went and <clears throat> she went with a uh, a request to the government, and it was a, such a strange request. She did it to Chachma that they wouldn't know what she's talking about, and that this way they would call up Rabbanov from the from the jail to decide it. Like with Yosef, you know, we don't know the interpretation of the gene. Let's get him out of jail, and, and maybe he can answer. Him. So his wife went. Also, this. So Amu, Amu, she told the government, Avdachad Havili, 
I have one uh, servant, a slave, Pascaloresh, they cut off his head, and they stripped his hide, a, a slave, but they ate his flesh, and they took the, uh, his, uh, his hide, they filled it with water, and they, uh, and they used that to, uh, to they gave to drink to his friends. They, they, you know, they used that to water his friends, to give him drinks. They never paid me for the slave, nor for, nor for hiring him. I, I wasn't paid. They, 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 they did this. In other words, they owe me money. Do something about it. They had no idea. What are you talking about? They took a slave and cut him his head off and stripped him and they used his skin. As, as a, what are you talking about? They didn't know. Amri, they said, listen, let's bring this smart, this smart monk among the Jews we have incarcerated here. But Lema, let him tell you, let him, let him explain what this lady means. They called Rabbanu. Maybe they didn't even know that it was his wife. Amr he said, Zanuk Amr he said something talking about a skin bottle, meaning a, 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 water, a water skin, a, 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 a jug of water that was made from goat skin. In other words, that they stole his, they stole her goat and they shechted the goat and they used the goat skin to make a water bottle. Amri, they said, oh, since he's such a big chacham, let him sit by the gate of the city or the gate of the government there. Then Aiden didn't let him be a judge. He's such a smart as this, so she got him out of jail. Chaza, he saw that because it's written on the gateway of the of the uh, of the town or the town or the or the uh, courtyard of the king there that called Dine and Mascara within any judge who is indicted, who's called to, to judgment. Loshmidan. In other words, if he is under suspect, why? Because he was called as a uh, defendant. He was called that, you know, he, he took money, owed money to somebody. He can't be a judge. Amalahu. So Rabbanah said to them, Elamiyata Osainish Miyamas, anybody can come, make a claim, make a false claim, and, and disqualify the judge. Umazma Din will come to judge possibly. He's going to, in other words, any just because you're indicted doesn't mean, you know, that you're guilty. So you're saying anybody who's indicted, is uh, is possible. So anybody can just come in and say, listen, he owes me money, he stole money from me, and possible to judge. Away, Ella called Dayan the Mascari Ladin, if he's called to judgment, meaning he's indicted, um, they take away money from him. In other words, if he's found guilty, but then then Lashme Dayan. Kosfu, so they changed the wording on the gateway. Okay, this is what they wrote. Brum in truth, Sabad Yudoy, the elder of the uh, the Jews, Amri, he says, not any judge, a, any judge who is indicted, but rather any judge, Amri called Dain de Mascari Ladin, Mimona, any judge who is indicted, who's called to, to court, and money is taken away from him, meaning he's found guilty, Lash Midan, he's not a judge. Chosa, he also saw the, 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 he also saw there that it says like this. There was another sign there that said like this. Barosh Kol Musa Anadam. The chief reason, the main reason why people die is because of an overabundance of blood. You know, it was common in those days, even until modern times, to let blood, because they thought a lot of the diseases come from too much blood. Blood is generated constantly. You have to let some of it out. So he said, you know what? I die. Blood is the reason why people die. Blood is the, like the main reason why people die is because they have too much blood. That's, that was what it said. And it continued on, Rosh Kolchayin, and the reason why people live when they are sick, reason ano hamar me as me wine. In other words, when people are sick, the main way to the main uh, effective remedy is wine. So he said, "That's that's your sign." Elamayata the nafamigra umes. If a guy falls off the roof and dies, right? People who fall off a roof, they fall off. So the uh, nafamigra, a guy falls off a tree, umes. Damakalei did an overabundance of blood kill him? No, he died because he fell off a tree. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, he maybe drank too much wine. Yeah, no, but you know, I'm just saying in general, accidents happen. People were run over by a chariot or a car or a truck or something. They weren't. They didn't die because of too much blood. The su man a man who's about to die. He's like a ghost. Mashka You think you're going to give him a little bit of wine? That's going to revive him. That's elochi This is what it should say. Barosh kol marin anadam. It, 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 one of the main reasons why people fall to illness is because of an overabundance, of, not because people die. People can die through accidents. People could die because they were killed by the sword or decapitated or whatever. But most of the main uh, illnesses, the, the, the main one of the main reasons for illness is dumb. That makes more sense. Rosh Kol Asman, and one of the main uh, ways 
for cures, for, uh, for remedies, is not a chaim. In other words, uh, if a person uh, needs a cure, uh, uh, m- most of the time, a wine can cure them if they have some sickness. In other words, what is their sickness? Too much blood, probably. I'm saying they have too much blood. But anyway, so it's called at the at the uh, the chief reason for uh, the chief way uh, that people uh, have a cure is with wine. That was what they had in those days. They didn't have modern medicine. So this is what they changed. So they changed it to read Baram. The truth. That's what we wrote. But Baram the Savi Yudoyami, the the elder of the Jews, wrote Rosh Komarin an Adam. Again. The chief reason for illness is me dumb. Dumb, too much dumb is the chief reason for illness, not for death. People could die through accidents, uh, murder, whatever. But the, for illness, main part of illness, main illness has come from too much blood. Rosh Kalasman, the the uh, main main the main cure uh, for uh, for main remedy for sickness is on achamar is me wine. But if there's no wine. If there's no wine, then people felt felt it, it's, it's, if you have a steady drinking of wine that uh, keeps you healthy, and if you don't have any wine, taman, then mitvusan, and then you have to bring herbs or uh, medicine uh, for a cure. Siva pischa the toy. Another thing. This is also just brought down here because we're talking about things that are written on the gateway of cities. Siva pischa the kaputkoi. Kaputkia was a famous place. It says anpik anbag andal. These are three words which all mean the same thing. So they all mean there are certain measures. Bezo antal, what is antal, which means anpak and ambag are the same amount. So revia shal Torah. Revia shal Torah revia, which is the equivalent, Rajbam tells us of, of revia salog, which is like one and a half egg fulls of liquid. That's the revia of the Torah that many halachas are dependent upon. Rajbam points out that the arbacosis of Pesach, which we learn out from the four Lashonas of Tzaisi, the Vitzalti, the Goalti, the Lakachti. So, the force, even though that's really Drabbana, it's just this, uh, an Asmach that we base on the Torah. So, that's why it's called Revia Shol Torah. It says Revia Beza Antal, it's Revia Shol Torah. There's other Lachas of Revias. For example, if a, if a Nazar drinks a Revia of wine, he's Chayev, that's a Lachum Hashmi Sinai. So, there are things that it doesn't say in the Torah specifically Revia Alo, right? For, for, uh, for the Chayev. Of mitzvahs or or chiyav or it is her in the case of a um, of a um, of a nazar drinking wine, but uh, we have a, we, there is a lachum hashem sina revias of yain for nazar and rabbanim and rad revias alog based on the arba kosos in the Torah, so it's based on that smachal Torah, so it's called revias shel Torah, even though the Torah doesn't say specifically that that's the amount of wine, for example, you have to bring revias for kiddush on Shabbos or yontif or other mitzvahs that are done with the revias. Uh, it doesn't say fairish for Achanami. I mean, he says the sheer antel and revius. Rashbam says this is going to be an apokot, not lebas revius. It's a revius of a lot. This is just mentioned because it was on a gateway, so we mentioned this halacha as well. Back to our issue of a chazaka. So we said uh, the last mission talked about things which are a chazaka, things which aren't a chazaka. It's got to be something of permanence, something permanence that the owner would be mocked about, that the uh, the person who the protester who's protesting it says, "What are you doing on my land?" What are you doing with this? Uh, uh, what are you doing with this? Is talking about. So he said anybody would protest if his stranger comes into the chutzner. But if it's a shutif, so certain things you're mocked about, certain things you're not mocked about. That's what we discussed in the first mission. Here are other things. Amar's of Eino Chazaka. Let's say Reuben and Shimon. Reuben has a chutzner, and Shimon has a building right next to his chutzner, and Shimon puts up a, um, a gutter pipe, meaning. This is what we mean, the, the, the vertical. You know, in the houses, normally you have a gutter, which goes along the roof. That's the horizontal one. Then you have the leader, which comes down from there and lets the water out. So here, Shimon put up a leader, and the water uh, went out from his roof down onto Rubain's chatzer. So a marzav in the chazaka. So can Shimon say, listen, I have a chazaka that my marzav is in this place, that my leader is in this spot? He said, that doesn't have a chazaka. In other words, even if it was there for three years, that's not considered something permanent. Sometimes you move that, the leader could be placed in another place along the roof, and therefore he can claim you can't leave it here anymore. But it has, his makam has a chazaka. I think Mark's going to explain it means that even though, even though you can't claim that I need my leader exactly in this spot, at this end of the gutter, at, at the top of the roof, the, the, the owner of the chazaka says, no, put it over there now. But he has a place... Once he's had the leader there for three years, 
he can't claim a chazaka that you gave it to me, you allowed me the rights, or I bought you the rights three years ago, etc. He's there for three years. He can't claim that I'm entitled to have a leader there, not necessarily in that spot. Maybe move it over, but I can. Ha- I can. Ha- that's what me over here. It's no chazaka for where it is right now. He has become a chazaka, but he has a place in not in this spot, another or in another spot. That's what one of Shatan in the Gemara. We'll talk about. The Gemara is going to explain this. Amar of ain't chazaka. He has become a chazaka. What do we mean by that? So that's one of the pshat that you can't leave it on this side, but you can put it on the other side. There's other pshat in the Gemara also. Hamaschila, that's the gutter itself. That's the horizontal thing that runs along the roof. If it's been there for three years, obviously he has permission and you can't uh, keep him away from this. Sulam Amitri, a small ladder, and a chazaka. People are not mocked, but you have a small little step ladder, just a couple of steps, a small one, and you had it there for three years. You know, that the, the man says, I've left it on my on your chutzah for three years. You gave me rights because I have to treat my wall or my roof or whatever. That I use that. There's no chazaka in that because the person doesn't mind about that. He wouldn't have protested. So if later on, Ruben wants to say, get it out of here, you can get it out of there. Well, it's really a large ladder, yesha chazaka, because there, he should have protested. If a if man had a large ladder there, he could say, listen, I bought the rights from you. Or you gave me the rights to keep it there. That's a chazaka. If you have a small window, the small window, let's say a man put in his yard, in his in his in his wall. He put a small window there so he could look out on his fields and check his fields. That's not a chazaka because people are not makbid about that. Well, it's source, but if it's a large window that he will see that he used to let in light, etc., uh, a person could say, oh, no, that's not it. Uh, if, if, if a person would protest that. If you put up a big window next to my house and you could see in my yard, etc., etc., I could. If you, we didn't have, if you didn't have rights to that, you didn't have an easement to be able to put that in, and you put it in there, I should have protested. And if I didn't protest and you were there for three years, you can claim that you bought that right for me. So that has a chazaka, but a small one, people are not mocked about that. So therefore, I didn't protest, right? I mean, therefore, that's why I didn't protest. But I could say, after three years, I don't want it there. What's the It's so small, so small that you can't even stick your head through it. That's a small uh, uh, window, an Egyptian window. If you remember, if it's got a frame to it, even though you can't put your head through it, but if it's got a frame that has more permanent stocha, then it is a chazaka. So therefore, we say that a small window is not a chazaka because the people just, he assumed you just used it to check out on your on your produce, on your fields, etc. But it wasn't something of permanence. And, and what is a small one? A small one means you can stick your head through it. But if you have a frame, Rabbi Yudas says, if you have a frame on it, that shows more permanence to it. Even if it's small, it's considered uh, you have a chazaka there. Says the Gemara. Yeah. Hmm? A ship. Right. You open a small window. He has a house or some uh, a wall of some sort. And he put a small window in there to check on his fields or whatever. But that gives him a sight into the other person's house or other person's chatzer, and the other person now is upset about that. And he says, you don't have any right to it. So it was a small window, could have just said, you know, that was just there temporarily to look at your uh, your fields or something. But if you put a big window to let in light, et cetera, that's something of permanence, and therefore the other person should have objected. Depends how the house was built. Remember we had before, that it depends how far away it is, et cetera, et cetera. You know, if it's four amas away, you guys can't build, put, put a wall next to my wall or a window next to my wall because it, you, you have no rights to look on that. So here he's talking about, did he buy those rights or not? Yeah. Yeah, we had a similar thing before, correct. Maya Mars of Eno Chazaka. What do we mean at the beginning of Mishri? He says, the leader has no Chazaka, but the place does have a Chazaka. What do we mean by that? So there's three different uh, explanations for this phrase. Amr Biro Shmuel, Biro Shmuel is like this. If you put the leader on one side, let's say the house went north and south, and you put the leader there for three years on the south, that's not a chazaka. I don't mind if you have your leader there, but I might need that space there. In other words, it's overlooking my chatzer. So it's no chazaka uh, that it's on this side. Meaning, you have the rights to keep it there, but I might want to move it to the north end of the wall instead of the south end of the wall. That you have a right to do. Because if I didn't object for three years, I, there's no chazaka that I, that I, that you have a chazaka, you're entitled to leave it at this end of the wall. I might be able to, I could tell you, move it to the other end of the wall. But you are entitled to leave, have a leader there because you had it there for three years. Three years is proof that I either sold you the right or gave you the right. That's one interpretation of the Pshan and the Mishnah. The, the leader has no chazaka, but its place has a chazaka. Meaning, where it is, it's that chazaka, but it, it, you're entitled to keep it somewhere along along the the horizontal gutter at the top of the roof. 
who is Ravoshia's father, Amar Enamak, he cannot prevent him from doing that. Right? Enamak, if he can't prevent him from doing that, the owner of the gutter, if he wants to, can close up the gutter. Azul Shaila Rabbisa, they asked Rabisa, now listen carefully. Rabisa was the father of Rav who was the father of Ravoshia. So the grandson said he could prevent him, Reuben could prevent him. The father of Chama said he cannot prevent him. They went and asked the grandfather of Bisa, Amalu Ma'akiv, he could prevent him. He said it, he said the Allah like his grandson. Karla Ram Bar Chama, Rami Bar Chama, who was apparently a different son of Chama, it's the same Chama. Rami Bar Chama was apparently a, a brother then of Oshia, right? But he says, Bachut HaMashulosh, the three-ply rope, you know, that, that's, that's uh, three times the three folds of rope, that's very strong. Love Mary Nothing will not be uh, will not uh, break very easily. Zer Ravoshia, this is Ravoshia, Benosha of Chama, the son of Rav Chama, the Benosha of Rabisa. In other words, that the, the, the grandson learned like the grandfather. It was a nice thing. They had a disagreement in Halacha. So they, the son was different, right? The, the, the father of the grandson didn't hold like the grandson, but the grandson held like his father, like his grandfather. That's a, that's a strong thing when three, when the grandson Hoskins, like the grandfather, that shows you that they're all learning and that's not going to uh, rip very, very easily. All right, we'll pick them here tomorrow from Mitzvah, from Sulam, and Mitzri, and Lachazaka. Have a good day, everybody.